Hey everyone, happy Thursday, July 11th. It's about 9.55 in the morning on the West Coast and it's time for another market update. Hope everybody had a happy and safe 4th of July holiday last week. Uh, last Friday, the day after 4th of July, the BLS re uh, released their June uh, jobs report. Uh, this is our nemesis. This is the one that's consistently you know, pushed back any sort of progress we've had and it's been pretty suspicious with the numbers. Um, and once again, it, it beat estimates, but uh, the unemployment rate, rate rose, which kind of counteracted that. And uh, they made some negative revisions, surprise, surprise, to previous months. So taking a closer look at those numbers, like I said the estimate was somewhere in the 190 to 200K estimate uh, range. And it came in at 200,000 or 206,000 jobs created. Uh, they, but they had made a, a two month revision, which they've continually done. Uh, to previous reports of a total of a, a negative 111,000 jobs lost. So, you know, the May went down from 272,000 to 218,000, which is a huge difference, obviously. And then April started at 175, then it went to 165, and now it's at 108. So again, this is just makes it a little hard to trust these numbers when they continually make these negative revisions. Uh, the markets react, but not as much as they react to these huge numbers when they first come out. So once again, a little frustrating. Uh, the birth death model, which is where they try to, you know, come up with a, you know, a formula where it creates uh, how many jobs were created from new businesses opening and, uh, you know, new or old small businesses closing. Uh, that came in at 59,000, again, way out of whack with ADP, which was only about 5,000. So, again, some suspicious numbers. Uh, the big gains were government up 70,000, healthcare up 49,000, education up 33,000. Uh, and keep in mind, that's the business business establishment survey. So this is where they get some data and then you know, they use some math magic and this is what they come up with. Uh, the next thing they do, though, is called the household survey. This is where the unemployment rate comes from. This is where they actually called households, talk to them, what's going on, what are you doing? Uh, jobs, you know, there's 116,000 jobs created, according to that, you know, which is under 206,000. Uh, total labor force, though, went up by 277,000, and that is why uh, our unemployment, the U3, which is the one you get you see reported in the news, that uh, went up from 4 to 4.1. Uh, remember, I think 17 out of 19 Fed members and governors uh, a couple months back said that they'd be surprised if unemployment went above 4.1. So now we're at 4.1. So, you know, if unemployment keeps ticking up, that's a positive for, uh, you know, mortgage rates. Uh, that also triggers something called the SOM rule, or basically a three-month average is a, a half a percent above uh, the low uh, of the over the last 12 months, uh, and that was at 3.5. So that's something that's a re recession indicator. We could be in a recession right now. We'll see. Uh, and then the U6 number came in, which is a little more all-encompassing. Uh, they came in at 7.4, which is unchanged. But both are the highest since they've been since November 2021. Uh, the other part about this that we get is average uh, hourly and weekly earnings. And uh, those came down. You can see these, they went up month over month, but they're replacing higher numbers last year. So the year over year numbers came down. Uh, average weekly hours remained unchanged. So the reason that's important is that, um, you know, wage inflation. Uh, the Fed looks at that. If people are making more and more money, we're going to spend more money. There's more inflation. So it's good to see those numbers coming down. Uh, and then the last thing I want to look at with this report was full-time versus part-time. We've talked about this before. Uh, you know, full-time work in June dropped by 28,000 jobs. Part-time went up by 50,000 jobs. Now in quarter two, uh, we've lost 296,000 full-time jobs and have gained 336 part-time, uh, 336,000 part-time jobs. So again, that's not necessarily an indicator of a super strong labor market where, you know, a lot of people are losing their full-time work and are having to go uh, and have part-time work. Uh, next thing we got uh, today, actually, was the June CPI inflation report. The Fed's favorite report is PCE, but CPI is another you know, indicator we look at. It's pretty important. And that actually came in in our favor. This was expected to kind of not work in our favor. It was supposed to go up the headline 0.1% uh, month over month. It came in at negative 0.1%. Um, and then the core was supposed to go up a little bit more than it did, and it went up 0.1%. So again, a, a good number to come out. This was something we were kind of expecting to kind of be a headwind this week after the good BLS jobs report and other news, uh, but this came in our favor. And if, as you can see, um, you know, even here that the headline uh, year over year was negative one. So it, it actually came, you know, they, the way they do this is they round up, round down. Uh, so the core could have been reported a little bit better than it was. Um, you know, if we take it out a little bit further, it's it's uh, 3.28 uh, instead of 3.30 and so forth. Uh, and then the big part about the core that's been, you know, basically, you know, causing all this uh, inflation has been shelter. Shelter is, takes up 45.5% of the core in CPI. Um, and then that finally came at a pretty moderate number, 0 0.2. Uh, 0 0.2 times 12 is, you know, 2.4% year over year. That's a, that's more in line with what we're seeing, you know, in real-time metrics. It's been coming at more about, you know, 0 0.4, which would be, you know, more close to, um, you know, almost 5% a year. 
So uh, really the number that helped us out the most was this lodging away. That's, you know, hotel stays, hotel prices coming down, which is, again, a sign of maybe our uh, economy slowing down, uh, people not traveling as much, so hotels having to adjust their pricing. Uh, but that number coming down was a big reason why this core number came in better than expected. Uh, motor vehicle insurance uh, came, is coming down off its peak of, I think, 23%. But still coming in, you know, pretty high number uh, month over month. But uh, you know, exploit that out again to about 11% compared to 19.5. So that's that's been a big one. Um, used cars and trucks uh, came down pricing. That's you know probably played in that motor vehicle insurance coming down a little bit. So if you look at everything else besides motor ve motor vehicle insurance and shelter for the core, it's only uh, in creating about 0.19% a year over year inflation, which is very, very small. Um, so that is good to see this. This number was a good one. This was very surprising when I saw that this morning. I was very happy to see that. Uh, let's see here. And then the next thing we got, uh, initial jobless claims today. That came in under the expectation. It came out 222,000 jobs created, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, new new unemployment claims, uh, where expectation was 236. But it was also holiday week, and the BLS does a pretty bad job historically of adjusting for holidays. So it'll be interesting to see next week because I don't, you can't imagine a lot of people are you know filing for unemployment, you know, while they're hanging out with their family and celebrating the holiday. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what next week's numbers coming at. Uh, miscellaneous to Powell. Powell talked to Congress. It's a semi-annual where he goes and talks to both uh, chambers of Congress, says similar things, you know, maybe a little bit more dovish, a little bit more what we want, want to hear from him uh, with his talks, you know, but overall, it wasn't anything groundbreaking, anything new, no great real questions from our senators or congressmen uh, that, you know, triggered anything, you know, news breaking. But overall, you know, he had a more of a dovish tone, which we like to see. And since then, we've got this inflation report. So, um, good to see overall. Uh, and then, you know, this uh, last week we were at about 7.08 for the average conventional for, you know, really qualified borrowers, according to uh, Mortgage News Daily's uh, daily survey. And uh, this week it's at 6.85. That's a big drop. It dropped, uh, what is that, 0.23%. Uh, um, that was awesome. That was actually 6.99 yesterday. So this CPI report today made it drop, you know, 0.14. So big drop today. It was nice to see it. You know, it's nice to see a six in front of it. So let's see, hope we can keep, you know, maybe get below that 6.5, which has been kind of, a, a you know, our low point. We haven't got below that this year. Uh, so important dates coming up tomorrow, we get uh, the PPI, so the uh, producer price inflation that comes out. Uh, hopefully that, you know, you know, continues with the CPI uh, number was. Uh, and then we got PCE, you know, later this month on July 26th. And then the Fed meets again on July 31st. Right now, the market's um, a little bit more positivity, maybe uh, a cut in July. Uh, but it seems like, you know, and, and based on uh, Chairman Powell's comments, it would most likely September. That seems like where everybody's thinking. The market's kind of expecting that. So unless some, you know, positive, maybe that PC inflation comes in way low, and we get a bunch of unemployment numbers, a bunch of bad economy numbers between now and July 31st, uh, one could expect probably stay as is on July and then hopefully a cut uh, in September. So uh, if anybody needs anything at all, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out but overall a really good week um so uh let's hope things continue in that direction and i'll talk to you guys next week thanks guys